Hello and welcome to part two of this five part video series by Leap on scripting in ANSYS Discovery. In this video, we're going to get into our first live coding example and show you how to create a basic script using the record function in Discovery to create some very simple geometry in the graphic user interface. Here you can see the complete example, something we'll walk you through in a moment. If I select run on this script, you'll see some basic geometry created in our graphic user interface. One thing to note with scripting in general is that you can run scripts in both run and debug mode. If I go ahead and clear the geometry here using the clear all command in the interpreter, change the mode to run mode and rerun that script, you'll notice that it is noticeably faster, but it doesn't show a visual step-by-step -step process as the script runs. We'll start with a blank discovery file. So I'm gonna create a new file, I'm not going to save this current design. I'm going to make sure I'm in model stage. This is going to depend on your licensing as to whether or not Discovery boots up in model or refine. And I'm going to create a new script window using the plus button. Now, something we touched on in the first episode was this record button. We also touched on the selection button. Now, Discovery has three main ways of tracking indexes and items within its scripting. By default, the script editor will always boot in smart variable mode. Now, smart variables are useful, but not particularly adaptable as scripts and geometry changes. Rays and index methods are more similar to what you might be used to if you've done any scripting in the past. For all of our scripting work, we'll be working with indexing and is something we recommend for you when you're starting out as well. With indexing selected, we can now enable the record button. Now, any commands we execute in the graphic user interface will have their code block equivalent printed out to us in our script file. For example, if I go to create the same geometry we just saw beforehand, we'll start with a base rectangle, setting our sketch plane and drawing a rectangle from the center origin. We can give this some arbitrary dimensions and then we can extrude that a certain height. What you'll see spit out into our script file is exactly what we've just done in the graphic user interface, but this time in script form. So we can see that we start by creating a sketch plane. We then set a new sketch. We then create a rectangle, and this is done via the creation of three points. We solidify that sketch, and then we extrude that sketch. So by using this tool, and I encourage you to experiment with this tool yourself in your own time, you'll quickly learn what the scripting equivalent is for a manual workflow. I'm going to continue to create the remainder of the geometry we saw in the scripting demo, and then we'll pick up once that script is complete. Now that we've created our complete script file, what I can do again is go to the interpreter, enter the clear all command, that's gonna reset our graphic user interface. And then with the record button now disabled, I can select run. And what we'll see is our code execute block for block and regenerate that geometry that we just created manually. Now we've only shown one application of the record button here in its ability to show us some basic geometry creation. However, you can use this record button for any common features within Discovery, whether that be named selections, geometry measuring, or any preparation you might do before taking a Discovery file into say Fluent or Mechanical. That's all for this video. We look forward to seeing you in part three, where we'll be looking at how to parameterize this script to vary the geometry with each run of the script.